بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقل الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار وما بعد so, uh, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers uh, as you remember from last week uh, we completed half of this lesson and if you can remember uh, the sheikh was uh, discussing the subject of um, al-wala'u wal-bara'u which is basically allegiance having allegiance and love and the opposite of that which is uh, al-bara is dissociation so if when we uh, if we just backtrack a little bit just to help us uh, understand where we left off um if you remember the sheikh was talking about having love and allegiance you know so having love for the muslims and allegiance to them so we're muslims and we have allegiance to our muslims and uh, dissociation that is with regard to the disbelievers so we don't have love for them like that and uh, we went in uh, into a lot of details in the last lesson so whoever needs to recap please go back to that lesson because the sheikh explained quite a lot to us there and we're not going to have time to go through that again so the recordings there for whoever needs it so then we stopped halfway through um and we stopped at the point where um uh, the sheikh finished speaking about al wala wal bara in general and what it means and um uh, then he mentioned and this is where we stopped he mentioned here this paragraph here he mentions here and he started discussing but there are exceptions so that we don't take a wrong understanding that many people have taken from uh, not understanding uh, this topic correctly so he'll explain this to us so then the sheikh he says فهذه المسألة تتعلق بعداوة الكفار وعدم موالاتهم وهي لا تقضي أننا نقاط أننا نقاط الكفار في الأمور والمنافع الدنيوية بل يستثنى من ذلك أمور. so the sheikh says says so in this affair this مسألة obviously is connected to this مسألة this subject that we're discussing now this affair it's connected to um, uh, you know, you have that, you know, hatred, and we know that, you know, the disbelievers are enemies in terms of the deen, that they're the enemies of Allah, because they obviously uh, don't follow what Allah and the Messenger came with. And and with that, with having that, uh, um, let's say, um, division, divide from them in that regard, and that hate, hatred, we also, with that, you you have um, you don't obviously love them or support them in 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 these affairs which were discussed last week. But the sheikh says, but this, but with obviously, um, you know, cutting them off, you know, and and uh, these kinds of things that we discussed in the last lesson, he says it doesn't it doesn't mean that you completely cut them off with everything, like as in we're living in two completely different worlds. If you understand what I'm trying to say. So this is what the Sheikh is saying. So he says there are a few exceptions to this rule. And he's going to explain them. And he mentions a couple in the introduction here. In this paragraph that we're talking about here. That we're going through. He mentions that for example. In the affairs of uh, uh, of uh, having benefits in the dunya. For example. Uh, um, he says. al manafi dunya wiya. So worldly benefits. For example. That's just one example. He will go through the rest. So the Sheikh. He starts off. By saying al awwal, so he says firstly, he says al awwalu, anahu ma abogdina lahum wa adawatuna wa wa adawatina lahum yajibu an nadawahum ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yajibu an nadawahum ila Allah wa la natrukuhum wa nakulu ha ula yada ulahi wa adaina ada ulahi wa adauna yajibu alayna an nadawahum ila Allah la al Allah an yahdiahum. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا فَإِنَّا نُقَاتِلُهُمْ مَا الْقُدْرَةِ فَإِمَّا أَنْ يَدْخُلُوا 
في الإسلام وإما أن يبذلوا الجزية إن كانوا من اليهود والنصارى أو المجوس وهم صاغرون ويخذعون ويخذعون لحكم الإسلام ويتركون على ما هم عليه لكن بشرط بشرط دفع الجزية وخضوعهم لحكم الإسلام أما إن كانوا غير كتابيين وغير مجوس ففي أخذ الجزية منهم خلاف بين العلماء So that's the first point. So we went through the whole thing, so it'll make it easy for us to understand. So the Sheikh says, firstly then, the first exception, he says that even though we have, there's a hatred that we have because they disbelieve in Allah and the Messenger, and that we have that um, hatred for them on that basis, it's obligatory upon us to call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's obligatory upon us to call him, uh, to call them to Allah and not leave them. And say, for example, or oh, those, these, uh, the disbelievers, these, they are the uh, um, enemies of Allah. And so they are the, our enemies as well. So it's, we don't say that. We Rather, it's obligatory upon us that we call them to Allah in the hope that Allah guides them. And And if they don't answer the call, then, you know, we can fight them with uh, depending on uh, our ability and and then the sheikh says it goes as for them entering in islam so let's say they enter islam and uh, and then they pay the jizya so the 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 tax the, the tax the jizya that's specific uh, to them for example from the jews and the christians the majus the fire worshippers of the persians at that time and they are small as in you know they know their place and they dealt with in this way because they haven't accepted Allah's uh, Allah's deen and they are made to feel small not in a bad way but made to feel small because of them rejecting Islam and they're left upon that like this and then the sheikh says however with a condition the condition with a condition that they pay the jizya. So if they don't accept Islam, then they have to pay this tax that's upon them. And they have, in the land with the Muslims, they know their place. They're small, they don't have people of importance, they, they know their place. As for, uh, and was this is in regards to what the scholars talk about, as in the, the Jews, the Christians, and the fire worshippers, the Persians, for example. Um, but uh, but he's, the Sheikh mentions a, an extra point here and he says if they are from other than the people of the book and other than the people of the you know Majus yeah the uh, Majus the uh, uh, I don't know the English word for it is but um, uh, fire worship as one who worship fire like for example the Persians of that time so he says in terms of the if they're other than these groups of people that we mentioned then taking the jizya this tax from them if they're living uh, with the Muslims uh, 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 and, and the lands being taken by the Muslim, for example, or living with the Muslims, then they pay this tax. If it's other than these groups of people, then there's um, some differences uh, in in this between uh, the scholars. But the Sheikh doesn't go into that. That's probably a topic for another time uh, in another book, inshallah. So um, uh, then the Sheikh says, Athani, secondly, so the second point. So we mentioned the first exception, we move on to the second exception. لا مانع من مهادنة الكفار إن الحاجة إذا احتاج المسلمون لمهادنتهم لكون المسلمين لا يقدرون على قتالهم ويخشى على المسلمين من شرهم لا بأس بالمهادنة بالمهادنة إلى أن يقوى المسلمون على قتالهم أو إذا طلبوا هم المهادنة هم المهادنة وَإِنْ جَنَحُوا لِلسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا فَيُهَادِنُونَ لَكِنْ لَيْسَ هَدَنَا دَائِمًا إِنَّمَا هَدَنَةٌ مُؤَقَّتَةٌ مُؤَجَّلَةٌ إِلَى أَجَلٍ حَسَبَ رَأْيِ إِمَامِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ لِمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْمَسْلَحَةِ So then the Sheikh mentioned the second point. He said secondly to us. He said secondly, uh, there's no stopping or there's no sort of uh, prevention 
in terms of having a truce with them. So having a truce with them, with the disbelievers, th- there's no stopping or uh, let's say no prohibition in that, in having a truce with them. If, for example, if the M- Muslims um, require that because of, for example, they may not be capable of defending themselves or fighting to defend themselves, for example, and that they fear, uh, uh, and, and and that there's fear uh, upon the Muslimin from the evil of them. So the Sheikh says there's no problem. Then there's no harm. There's no problem in having a truce. Open open till the Muslims can strengthen themselves, and that they're in a position to move forward. For example. Or, on the other hand, if the disbelievers themselves have requested a truce with the Muslims. And then the Sheikh mentions an ayah here. So we'll, we'll read the ayah. Um, and if we go to the, uh, to the Quran, or the Mus'haf, it's in the Surah Al-Anfal. So let's go there. Surah Al-Anfal, verse 8. Read the whole verse. But if they incline to peace, you also incline to it. And put your trust in Allah. Verily, He is the All-Hearer, the All-Knower. So you can see that as well from the Quran. And then the Sheikh mentions here. So if there's a truce, if they if they uh, you know put forward a truce and uh, and they want a truce, for example, or there's a truce in place, the Sheikh says it's not a truce that's going to be there permanently. No, it's not a truce that's permanent. It's a truce that is uh, timed. It's it's timed. It, it has a time limit. It's time limited. Depending on what the Imam of the Muslim of of the Muslims thinks and feels in terms of what he sees of a benefit for the Muslims, for example. Then the Sheikh continues and he says, number three. He says, number three, لا مانع من مكافأتهم على الإحسان إذا أحسنوا للمسلمين لا مانع أن يكافئوا يكافئوا على إحسانهم. قال الله تعالى لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تب أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين. So that's the third point. So that's a fairly short one. So the Sheikh says that there's no uh, prohibition here, and no harm uh, in in responding in kind. I think that's the best English word to use: responding in kind. Or in kind, for example, um, if um, they um, uh, show goodness to us of of varying types, any kind of goodness, then you you show that back, you repay that back in kind, and there's no uh, problem in doing that. It's not a problem, uh, and there's no prohibition in that. It's not as if you t- if if we took this with the wrong understanding of these points. For example, if we had the wrong understanding, like people do, they would they uh, if they were being good. For example, this is being good, like it might be your neighbor being good to you. You just like, just don't bother. Don't talk to them, turn away from them, you know, bad manners and all the rest of it, which uh, is is obviously far from the truth here. Yeah, and, and, and it's no good. So so uh, we just kind of contrast there. I just don't understand the principle. So you respond in kind. Do be good to you, you be good to them, which we all, well, most of us do that anyway, I'm sure. Um, uh, that, that, that's a principle that we're all aware of. And um, uh, let's continue. So then the Shaykh mentions uh, an ayah from the Quran uh, where Allah says uh, in uh, Surah Al Mumtahina. So let's go there. Al Mumtahina. Um, Allah does not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who, who fought not against you on account of religion and did not drive you out of your homes. Verily, Allah loves those who deal with equity. So is that clear? And let's read that again. Allah does not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who fought not against you on account of religion and did not drive you out of your homes. Verily, Allah loves those who deal with equity. So that's very clear for us. That. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> Fourthly, Rabi'an. Al-walidu al-kafiru yajibu ala waladihi al-muslim an yabarrahu. لكنه لا يطيعه في الكفر لقوله تعالى ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه حملته أمه وهنا على وهن وفي وفصاله في آمين أن اشكر لي والوالديك إلي المصير 
وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِي إِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ سورة لقمان فرس 14 و 15 الوالد له حق وإن كان كافرا لكن لا تحبه المحبة القلبية بل تكافئه على تربيته لك وأنه والد وله حق تكافئه على ذلك So what the Sheikh is saying is he says fourthly and he gives his next example fourthly and he says um, in the example of a father that is a disbeliever so for example somebody has uh, uh, you know somebody has a father who is a disbeliever that was not Muslim it's obligatory upon the child to uh, the child who is a Muslim to be good to show bir to show all kinds of goodness and obedience etc however however you we don't the, the, that muslim child does not obey them in their kufr and their disbelief and that which goes against what allah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say and then there's a long ayah here which we will read from surah luqman two ayahs 14 and 14 and 15 so let's read them and we have enjoined on man to be dutiful and good to his parents. His mother bore him in weakness and hardship upon weakness and hardship. And his weaning is in two years. Give thanks to me and to your parents. Unto me is the final destination. But if they both strive with you to make you join in worship with me, others that of which you have no knowledge, then obey them not. But behave with them in the world kindly and follow the path of him who turns to me in repentance and in obedience. Then to me will be your return, and I shall tell you what you used to do. And that's quite clear. And then the Sheikh says, he finishes this uh, paragraph off, and he says, the father has has his right, has rights. Even, even if he is a disbeliever, he still has rights. Islam gave him rights, certain rights, even if he's a disbeliever. However, you don't, you don't have that love from your heart for him because of his disbelief. Rather, um, uh, you have a love for him in the sense that, you know, the effort that he put in, you know, bringing you up. And so you give that in kind. In a similar way we talked about in the previous point. That because he is, and that he is he's a father. And that he has rights. So you kind of uh, return that in kind uh, upon that in that context. So then uh, the Sheikh mentions the fifth point, says Khamisan Tabadul Tijarati Mahum Mushira Minhum Shira Shira al Shira al Hajati Minhum Wastirad al Bai Wal Asliha Minhum Bisamani La Bat Sabizalika Wakad Khan and the Biu Salahu Ali was Salam Yetamalu Mal Kufari Wakadali Kaamala Salahu Ali was Salam Ahla Khaybar or Hum Yahud ala an yazra'u al-arda bi juz'in mimma yakhruj minna yukhruj minna laysa hadha bid al-mawalat wal mahabba wa inna ma huwa tabadul masalih yajibu an na'rif hadhihi al-umur wa annaha la tadkhul la tadkhul fi al-mawalat wa laysa manhiyan 'anha we'll just stop there because it continues but we'll just stop on this paragraph here so then the sheikh says fifthly um, he says, for example, you know, exchanging in terms of business and trading, so exchanging goods, buying and selling, uh, this sort of thing, where there's a need, for example, as well. And, uh, you know, um, buying and selling a business and trading. That's what's been mentioned. You give some examples of different things, including even um, uh, weaponry and all, other things amongst those things that you would trade in. Uh, uh, a to Z of things the, And the Sheikh says There's no issue with that And then he makes an example from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says indeed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to uh, You know trade and you know Work with the Kufar in this regard well, For example he, gave, he gives an example Because he worked with uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Worked with the people of Khaybar And they were the Jews Upon you know farming uh, land and, and, and you know taking parts of it And, and farming land and, and the Sheikh says 
in this example, as you can see, it's not it's not considered uh, a mu'alat or you know uh, having the allegiance or love for them. It's not considered as al mu'alat love and you know taking care and having love for these people. Rather, it is um, exchanging of benefits. So we take a benefit and they take a benefit. So for example, okay, let's say we need um, uh, onions or whatever because we, we don't have them in our land and they need um, cucumbers or whatever. So, you know, we trade, we trade, the, we buy, uh, they take that and we take that and they benefit and we benefit. And that's all it is. It's in uh, the dunya, we, yeah. It's in the uh, benefits of, uh, of worldly uh, benefit. Uh, so the Sheikh says, obligatory then uh, to know that we know these affairs. Uh, and and that we don't uh, uh, enter what's considered as love al muwalat, which we're talking about here, um, when it's not from it. So uh, meaning that we understand these affairs properly, so we don't mix up things and get mixed up. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, "Kadalika al istidanatu minhum." And the Nabiyyu sallallahu alaihi wasallam istidana min al Yahudi ta'aman. وَرَهِنَا دِرْعَهُ إِنْدَ إِنْدَهُ وَمَاتَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَدِرْعُهُ مَرْهُونَ إِنْدَ يَهُودِي بِتَعَامِ اشْتِرَاهُ لِأَهْلِ لا مانع من هذا لأن هذه أمور دنيوية ومصالح ولا تدل على المحبة والمودة في القلوب فلا بد أن نفلق بين هذا وهذا لأن بعض الناس إذا سمع نصوص العداوة للكفار وعدم وعدم محبتهم قد يفهم أو قد يفهم أنه لا يتعامل معهم ولا يتصل بهم نهائيا وأن تكون وأن تكون مقاطعة نهائية لا هذا محدد بأحكام وبحدود وبشروط معروفة عند أهل العلم مأخودة من كتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So what's being mentioned here is a follow-on from what uh, from the it's still the same point point five is a follow-on from there. So the Sheikh says likewise, uh, for example, uh, where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم um, um, took arms like arms A L M S the word arms yeah or exchange for example. Uh, from a Jew, so the example of this, this is uh, where he he uh, he gave his armor, he gave some of his armor or his armor to, to the Jew in exchange for food. But then the Prophet ﷺ had passed away, yeah. But this exchange like this as well is the Sheikh says that there's no problem in it. It's not considered uh, mualat, as we mentioned earlier, and it's to do with and it's clear to us. And it's very clear here. It's very clear that you know these are. Um, uh, Mutual benefits, isn't it? It's a mutual benefit. Or just a benefit for one person. Yes, yeah, just mutual benefit and trading. As in the example of trading as well. And it doesn't, uh, it, it does, it's not considered, or it, it doesn't show, if somebody does that, it doesn't mean, uh, for example, that, oh, now they love this person and they have love for them from their heart and, um, and all this. The Sheikh says, therefore, it's important for us that we are be a that we're able to distinguish this from that. Uh, because it says some of the people, if they hear these kinds of, um, uh, if they read these kinds of things that we've just read now um, uh, about um, having uh, um, hatred for the disbelievers, for example, uh, and not having love for them, um, uh, what what they understand from it is that uh, the following, which is incorrect, but they'll understand from it, for example, or oh, you don't work with them, don't uh, deal with them, don't have any dealings with them, don't have any connection with them. Um, until the end of time, that's it. You just completely cut yourself, cut you cut yourself off, like as if you're living in a completely different world. And that's the wrong way of thinking about this. And the Sheikh clarifies that. He says, no. He says, he says, this is it's constricted. It has rules. It has conditions, like we're talking about right now, that are well known with the people of knowledge, and and these principles, and these um, uh, judgments uh, and rules are taken from. The the book of Allah and uh, the Prophet Sunnah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sixthly, Sadisan. Abah Allahu tazawwaja min min nisa min nisa'i ahl al kitab bi sharatin 
أن يكون عفيفات في أراضي النار وأباح الله لنا أكل ذبائهم أو ذبائهم So uh, I'm sure we all know this um, but we'll go through it as well uh, Sixthly Allah has uh, made permissible for us to marry their women folk from the people of the kitab from the people of the book the Jews and the Christians for example so long as the women um, for example are chaste I think that's the best word to use here chaste and they are honorable yep they have the honor uh, not like in today's society I mean we don't need to probably talk too much about it but we all understand um, so and also this is important to note as well this is important to note as well this still stands it's in the Quran um, Allah has made permissible for us um, uh, you know their meat so long as it isn't for example uh, from the Jews and Christians so long as so long as it isn't pork obviously or anything outright haram that's haram for us uh, we can eat their meat right Surah Al-Ma'idah I think it's verse 5 you can have a look there um, in more detail about this and I think Sheikh Saleh al uh discusses this you can search uh, Sheikh Saleh al uh and um, eating the meat or eating the food or meat of the people of, uh, uh, of the people of the book and there's a very very good explanation by the Sheikh goes in lots of detail and clarifies the affair so that's worth reading if you want to make a note of that in your own spare time. <clears throat> then the Sheikh says, Sabian, La ba'sa bi ijabati da'watihim wa akli ta'amihim al mubah kama fa'ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a follow on point from six, the sixth point. There is no problem uh, with um, accepting their invite and eating their food that is permissible for example um, uh, as as in the example of the Prophet Sallam, what the Prophet Sallam did that's well known so uh, so here it's clear you know if you say for example a Jew or a Christian invites you um, to their home or whatever it is and you go there and you eat and as long as it's what's permissible to eat of course like as long as it's not pork for example obviously you go to a, a Jews house you're probably not going to have pork but if you went to Christians maybe there will be as long as it's not that kind of thing or anything that's impermissible you can have it right uh, as mentioned here and like as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did as an example for us right uh, the eighth point Saminan Al-Ihsanu ila al-jirani min al-kufari li'an li'an لهم حق حق الجوار لأن لهم حق الجوار. So this is another point, important point. For example, being good to the, you know, uh, being good to your neighbors, from, uh, uh, the ones who are from the non-Muslims. If you have neighbors are non-Muslims, you be good to them. You show goodness because they have the rights of a neighbor. Right? They have a right. There's rights. Of a neighbor, and 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 if they're a disbeliever and they're a neighbor, they have a right. They have a right upon you. Tasian ninth, the ninth point. لا يجوز ظلمهم قال تعالى ولا يجري منكم شنآن قوم على لا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى. That's from Surah Al Maida. So then the ninth point is not. It's it's not. It's impermissible to oppress them you can't oppress them just because they're non-muslims you don't go around oppressing them it's not allowed it's impermissible and as Allah said in the Quran Surah Al-Ma'idah and if we go to verse 8 here I'll read the whole verse O you who believe stand out firmly for Allah and be just witnesses and let not the enmity and hatred of others make you avoid justice be just that is nearer to piety and fear Allah, verily Allah is well acquainted with what you do. So that's clear for us. Also, uh, okay, that's fine now. So we, we finished those eight points there. So it's it's important that uh, we, we go through these and that we make notes and understand these because it's, it's helpful. Because I'll give an example. If we had just read the first part of that lesson and disappeared and never came back, you wouldn't have a really good understanding. So it's important to understand the topic 
completely. Don't learn half of it. Like we've done now, Alhamdulillah, we've gone through this. The Sheikh's explained all of this topic because we understand it very well now. And how we, you know, okay, we, we don't have love for the disbelievers, etc. what we've learned. But at the same time, you know, we work with them. We show good, good example. We deal with them justly. You know, all that, what Allah and the Messenger have commanded. So it's important to know that and not take a wrong understanding. As you can see, if you took the wrong understanding here, I mean, it's dangerous. That's why we should have proper knowledge. Knowledge and taking knowledge and understanding it properly. So then the Sheikh mentions, uh, um, we're going back now. So he mentions, um, so uh, what um, uh, the original author says, you know, he says, um, uh, he says, and his speech, um, no, may Allah have, uh, may Allah uh, guide you. Yeah. So the Sheikh is just explaining in these parts, I will skip them because the Sheikh is just explaining uh, what the Sheikh has mentioned. We've already read this. So um, let's just go to the point where we continue benefiting from that. Um, so just uh, the Sheikh is summarizing now everything we've gone through. Um, we won't need to just summarize what we've gone through because you already know that. So you can always refer back to the previous lessons. Just to end up. Paragraph, just outlining the to the uh, headings of the subjects we went through, uh, and the masail that we discussed. And then the Sheikh mentions here. It says, "So we'll, let's start from here, and then we'll finish." Qawluhu, arshadak Allah. Hada du'aun min Sheikhi rahimahullah li kulli man bi kulli man yaqra'u hadi risala mutafahiman laha yatlubu al-amal. بها بأن بأن يرشده الله والإرشاد هو الهداية إلى الصواب والتوفيق للعلم النافع والعمل الصالح والرشد ضد والرشد ضد الغي قال تعالى قد تبين الرشد من الغي وقال تعالى وإن يروا كل آية لا يؤمن بها وإن يروا سبيل الرشد لا يتخذوه سبيلا والرشد هو دين الإسلام والغي دين أبي جهل وأمثاله. so the sheikh mentions here says the sheikh was explaining the book uh, may Allah uh, preserve him uh, and reward him uh, he refers back to the original author may Allah have mercy upon him and he says um, uh, and this is from the original author أرشدك الله may Allah guide you and the Shaykh then explains that to us, and we mentioned this in the previous lesson, but let's go through it because it's beneficial to us. This is a dua from the Shaykh, the original author, Rahmahullah, to everyone, every person who reads this book that we're reading, uh, trying to un understand it and understanding it, and, and, and by that, wanting and seeking to act upon what he understood and learned from it, uh, and, uh, and, and so that Allah guides him. And then the Sheikh says, Al Irshad, uh, uh, guidance, uh, or Al Irshad, it means guidance. So uh, there's two words here, Al Irshad and Al Hidayah. And they both mean the same thing. The synonyms. And it means guidance to that which is correct and success of success, and not just success only, but success of obtaining or learning beneficial knowledge and acting upon it, and therefore, uh, on, um, uh, gaining beneficial knowledge and from that um, or the fruits of that are um, you uh, carrying out um, righteous actions and then the shaykh says and rushed and, and guidance is the opposite of al-ghay, misguidance um, and then there's uh, some ayahs quoted here which we will also have a look at um, uh, inshallah and so if we um, go to uh, the uh, reference points here, so Al-Baqarah, verse 256. There is, um, we'll read the whole ayah. There is no compulsion in religion. Verily, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. So this is the bit we're looking at now. Verily, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. And, uh, and so uh, that's, uh, uh, obviously, it makes sense here from the point of view. You might be thinking, hang on a second, the words are a bit different. But the right path is guidance, isn't it? Having guidance means you're on the right path. And and misguidance is the wrong path. Yeah, easy, easy to understand. And then um, uh, the next ayah is from Surah Al-A'raf, 
verse 146. Let's go there. We'll read that. We'll read all ayah and then we'll point out uh, which part we're looking at. I shall turn away from my ayat versus the Quran those who behave arrogantly on the earth without a right and e without a right and even if they see all the ayat proofs evidences verses lessons signs and revelations etc they will not believe in them and if they see the way of righteousness monotheism piety and good deeds they will not adopt it as the way but if they see the way of error polytheism crimes and evil deeds um, they will adopt that way. That is because they have rejected our ayat, proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, and will heed us to learn a lesson from them. So it's a, it's it's it's, a, it's the towards the uh, middle and end of those uh, the ayah. So you can see from there um, that rushed guidance is the deen of Islam, and uh, misguidance or that everything that which is in opposition to Islam. Then it's uh, the Sheikh's mentioned here, it's the deen of Abu Jahl, as we all know, Abu Jahl and the likes of him. Let's continue. We're nearly, uh, we, we've got this last paragraph and then we finish for the day, inshallah. Oluhu, uh, going back to the original author's uh, um, uh, um, writing here. Oluhu, Arshadakallah li ta'atihi, hadha dua azim, or hadha dua'un azimun. فَإِنَّ الْمُسْلِمَ إِذَا أَرْشَدَهُ اللَّهُ لِتَاعَتِهِ فَقَدْ سَعَدَ فِي فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَالطَّاعَةُ هِيَ انْتِثَالُ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ وَاجْتِنَابُ مَا نَهَى اللَّهُ عَنْهُ هذه هي طاعة أن يطيع أن يطيع الله أو أن يطيع الله في أوامره فتفعلها فتفعلها وفي نواهيه فتجتنبها امتثالا لأمر الله وابتغاء so then the Sheikh says, uh, and he mentions the next point, and that is uh, may, uh, where, the, uh, where the original author makes dua to the reader, to us, and he says, may Allah guide you to his obedience. And the Sheikh says, this is a great and magnificent dua, for the to the Muslim, for the Muslim, in that uh, that Allah guides uh, the Muslim to his obedience, and if that's if that is the case and that happens, then he's happy in the dunya and the akhirah. He will he's, he's happy. He'll be happy in the dunya and he'll be happy in the akhirah. And obedience, what is it? And he, the Sheikh breaks it down. And says obedience is carrying out, acting out that which Allah has commanded you with. And st and staying away from uh, uh, staying away from that which Allah has prohibited us from, He says this is obedience, and that and that uh, He is obeyed uh, in that which He has commanded. So 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 we do it, you know. So wherever Allah says we do it, and uh, and in His prohibitions we stay away from it, and that's what obedience is. For the reason of why, to uh, you know, wishing for the face of Allah, doing it for Allah, ikhlas. Remember previous books, ikhlas for Allah alone, purely for Him, sincerely for Him, azza wa jal. You know, um, uh, hoping for His reward, and at the same time hoping for His reward, and at the same time also fearing His punishment. So whoever is given success in terms of, of being obedient to Allah and that is being, is being guided to uh, Allah's obedience, for indeed this person will, is, is happy in the dunya and the afterlife. So in this world and the afterlife will be happy, will be in a good place. So uh, inshallah we'll stop there and then we'll reach the next topic. And uh, so we will discuss that next week. ta'ala. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته